just when I'm supposed to turn the mic on, I, I forget. So um, again, this is a recreation committee meeting and we're starting off here for May. And our agenda today is pretty full. We have a lot of guests and visitors today. Uh, some of the, the visitors are candidates for new committee members. And uh, we'd like to start off our meeting with uh, introduction of the potential new team. So uh, Steve, would it be okay if, if we asked you to tell us a little bit about your interest in the committee? Come on up to the microphone there and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and that's all we need to do. some sales, some HR. Uh, I dabbled in a little of everything. People tap me on the shoulder saying, come play with me, so I did that. So, um, we have three girls that still live in Des Moines. Uh, Lori and I, uh, we use most of the amenities down here. We use the trails, we keep a bar in Rock Lowland. I'm, I'm a golfer, she hasn't learned yet. Sure, better? Um, we use Branchwood Recreation Center, um, gun range, um, a little of everything. So I guess uh, the reason I'm here is if you're gonna be part of a community in POA, you know, step up, be willing to help a little and uh, keep this place the nicest place that uh, we can make it. That's awesome, thank you for, for that background and, and welcome to Bella Vista. And uh, wish you luck as we go through our process here. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Okay, I, I think Deborah is next. And by the way, all these uh, applicants uh, were um, included in your, your package for the current committee. Um, and, and I did speak to all these folks here and uh, they're, they're qualified to be here and potentially join our committee. So um, let's, let's hear what they have to offer us and, and we'll go from there. Good afternoon. My name is Deborah Lukacs and I appreciate your time this afternoon. My husband and I moved here in 1999. We live on Lake Windsor on a nice quiet little cove, not too far off the main body of the lake. And we absolutely love it and have every intention of staying here. I put a lot of time and consideration into how to invest my time. I have a passion for the outdoors and I do use quite a few of the amenities in the area. I sat through several of your meetings this past year and I've read through your minutes and the one thing that I appreciate is that you are looking for and accept feedback from the community. I think that that's really important and I think that's why organizations like this exist. I have with me a advertising publication for Bella Vista Resort from 1928 written by the Linebarger brothers. And if you will indulge me, I'd like to read a small portion from the inside. To you, who love the outdoors, the open spaces, the peaceful, the quiet, the restful, the pure fresh air, the nearness to nature, the shady nook, the, cool, the clear cool stream, and the deep blue holes. The pleasure of bathing, rowing, hunting, fishing, dancing, tennis, golfing, exploring, riding, hiking, motoring, climbing, or any other clean sport or recreation, Bella Vista is forever dedicated. This is what they use to lure people, people to the Bella Vista Resort. This is what made the Bella Vista Village a successful retirement committee. And this is what sets the city of Bella Vista apart from the other cities in Northwest Arkansas. This is what I want to be a part of to help maintain and preserve. And this is what I would like to be a part of to help and grow and develop 
as our city continues to evolve into the next chapter. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your consideration and have a good afternoon. Thank you very much, really appreciate that. Okay, uh, Mary, would you like to come on up and say a few words? Thanks for letting me follow that, by the way. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, you guys. So my name is Mary Jones. I moved here in August of last year. So we are actually transplants from Washington State. Um, I actually have children, which is great because I have a 14-year-old, so he actually helps utilize all of the facilities that not everybody does. We do the putt-putt golf, we do the frisbee golf, we utilize all the pools. It's fantastic being here. With that being said, you know, everybody asked me when I was moving here from Washington, how did you pick Arkansas? Why? You know, like, did you take a dart and throw it at the dartboard and I'm like, or at the map? And I was like, no, you know what? We did tons of research. Not only did we do tons of research, my husband was adamant the only place he wanted to live was in Bella Vista. We have private lots. We have trails. We have lakes here. They're all private. Everything is well maintained. I would not want to live anywhere else. This is our home. I am young, I have a young family, and I want to be here forever. And I want to take care of our neighborhood. And I actually go, and I've already checked on the Pup Pug golf course near my house. I've been watching them uh, like refinish the pools and stuff like that, because I'm excited. We use those facilities, and we want them to be the very best every single time. So that's my why behind it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, uh, last but not least, Macy. Come on up and just a couple words, you know, let us know uh, what your interests are and everything. Hi, my name is Macy. Obviously, um, some of you might know my husband. <laughs> Please don't hold that against me. <laughs> I'm sorry for whatever he does. Um, and I second that. I don't know how I'm going to be able to follow what she said, but basically everything she says is 100% what I believe in in Bella Vista. Um, I love the outdoors. We have two kids, ages two and one, who are just starting to be able to enjoy the outdoors. My daughter screams every day to go outside. She's banging on the door to go outside. I want to get her out. <laughs> and there's plenty of stuff around Bella Vista to do, and I'm excited about that. And I'm, I feel like I could bring a new up-and-coming mom's perspective to the table. Things that, you know, kids, my, my kids' age could benefit from. I know we've got the pools and stuff like that, which I'm looking forward to this summer to get them in. Um, but yeah, I moved here three years ago um, when I met Rick, and I've loved it. I've loved it. I lived in Springdale since 97 and thought, eh, okay, Springdale's okay. But when I moved here, I was like, wow, this place is awesome. This is definitely where I want to have a family. And I, like I said, I want to get my, my kids out in it. So that's kind of what I want to bring to the table is a new up-and-coming family perspective. Great. Okay. So again, thank y'all. Okay. So, so thank, thank you, you folks for coming in. Um, it's going to be a very hard choice for us here. We're going to have such a strong committee now uh, going forward as, as some of the, the experienced folks leave our committee next month and you come in. It's, uh, it's happy to know that we're going to continue to be strong, uh, but now we have to be able to choose from you folks um, only three, maybe four uh, folks. So what, what's going to happen is we have a committee member that might uh, be elected to the board. So if that happens, then we need four folks to, to uh, join our committee. Um, and there, there's a fifth person who uh, submitted an application that, that didn't come in today. So on um, May 19th, I'll be able to know uh, how many folks we need. And then uh, the committee here will vote uh, between now and then. Um, and then I'll, I'll just tabulate the numbers to, to let you know who could join our committee now, the three or the four, and, and maybe maybe folks that'll have to wait for, for the next vacancies to fill. Because if you don't get in this time, certainly um, it sounds like you want to be involved, so just wait an, an extra year. The committee's always rotating, so there'll be new spaces to open up. So 
Uh, thanks, thanks again. again. And, and um, I, will I will let you know as soon as possible who can come on board right away. Okay? All right. Thank, Thank you for that. that. So you, you could stay, stay or, or, um, or, or you could leave if you want. want. Your, Your choice. choice. I have one, one question for Deborah. Deborah. Has, is, is that, that an original booklet you have? Yes, have? Have you, you shared, shared that, that with Zeta at, at the, the museum? museum? They actually have that there already. Do they? Yeah. Okay. I actually bought it from Zeta. Perfect. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I want. Okay, we have two other guests still in the room, and um, if you could just stand up for a second and introduce yourselves, and then we'll get to your business portion in, in just a little bit, but it's good to know who we have here with us now. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thank, Thank you, ladies, for coming in. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the floor here um, as, a, as a line item in our agenda coming right forward here in a couple minutes. All right. So that brings us to our regular uh, business section on amenity reports. And we'll get started on that with uh, the Branch Wood Complex and Trail Report from Debbie. Um. I'm going to make it brief. Everything is working well. Obviously, the pickleball courts are a big deal. Um, I was said this morning I was out there at 7:30, and there were two players out there playing at 7:30 this morning. Um, everyone's very, very happy, and would like to see more courts. So I just thought I would pass that by Tom, just in case you think that uh, that would not be the case. The um, a storm this weekend really made a mess on the, the trail, and I couldn't quite figure it out, and I talked with Jessica, and then Chris explained it. It's, it's the hail that came, and so there in the next couple days, but it's totally covered with branches and stuff from the trees and the leaves. Um, the equipment's really back pretty much where it was originally. I think everyone's anxious about not having to make any appointments. So June 1st, it'll be open without any appointments. Um, other than that, the branch would, like I said, the, the complex is going well. The only thing I would say is I spoke with John today at Lock Loman, and that's my second amenity. He and I talked about the trash cans that are at Branchwood, and they're always losing lids and they're in pretty bad shape. And I don't know what the budget would be, but it would be really nice if we could get two or three of those really nice covered trash cans like we have on at the dog park and by the uh, pickleball courts along maybe the trail. So that's just a suggestion. I don't know if that's in the budget, but it would, it would be a nice benefit. Lock Lomond is, it was great today. Um, everything was in order. There was no trash or anything. The new... Uh, Small Dog Park is up and going, and um, I, the only thing I noticed is that there were no uh, puppy mitts uh, at the Small Dog Park, and John said they're on order. So I guess, yeah. Uh, the the um, Small Dog Park is not open yet. Oh, it is? That's why we don't have uh, the bags. Uh, um, it, we're, we're given that grass until about June the 1st okay. to uh, come in good, and then, okay. and then we'll open. Yeah. Okay. Um, is, is there a sign-up sign that, that says closed? No, there's not. <laughs> I just, I mean, I was there, and I... I Th there's a lock on the, on the gate. Oh, there is. Okay, yeah. I did not try to open the yeah. gate. Okay, okay, so, okay. So, um, all right. Okay. Anyway, everything seemed in order, and um, like I said, there was quite a few walkers this morning with their dogs, and uh, so many people use the baseball diamond for their dogs, so I don't know, you know, I don't quite know, but they were picking up after them. So anyway, that's it for Lock Loman and Branchwood. All right, thank you for your reports, appreciate that as always. And one note of administration here, uh, Tom Judson may have to leave early. Um, there's a conflict with another meeting, so uh, Tom, I guess you just have to step away when you have to step away. 
Yeah, yeah it's uh, the, planning the planning commission meeting for the city, and uh, Tommy Lee is going to text me when uh, when we're up. So uh, he's going to give me about a five minute notice. So I'll be up and out very quickly. So all right, if you see Tom Lee, that's what it is. Okay, so back to our amenity reports. Let's go over to Janet and see how Tyree Park is doing. Well, this is uh, the first time that I've gotten to tour Tyree Park with quite um, a focused eye, shall we say. And I, I love that park. It's, it's beautiful. It's got plenty of distance uh, for people that want to use uh, the various, you know, uh, whether it's the boating ramps or whether it's just uh, shelter, it's just gorgeous. And uh, I'd like to say everything was, was in really fairly good condition. I, I did notice, <clears throat> I was wondering, it seemed to me like we had talked about Denise in one of your questions several months back about the horseshoe pits and no oh then i'm asking are joan joan are those used do you know i wonder if we could they're not used to my knowledge i wonder if we could take the the poles out because it really constitutes a lot of little kids running around, and okay. it's um, it's about the only dangerous item in in Tyree, and maybe get rid of some of the ties around the one and, and level it out just a little bit. It wouldn't take much, it didn't seem to me. But um, I thought I was I was real pleased with the way everything looked and. I wish there were some way we could, um, I know it's kind of in the, what shall I say, wilderness of, of uh, Bella Vista, but it's so nice, it would be wonderful if we could find a way to maybe bring it up in inside Bella Vista or find a way to put it out in front of uh, our community a little bit more because it's a very, uh, peaceful and it has the playground uh, so anyway I don't need to sell you guys on it but I just know that uh, it was it was really well maintained I can uh, mention it to Kim because we are doing some um, kind of spotlight things for the new app good. and that might be a good um, yes a good exactly. item to add to exactly that. now kind of related to the Highland Boulevard neck of the woods. I, I have a question, I'll show my ignorance, but that's okay, it's been on full display for some months. Um, Granton Park, is that, is that a, a strictly city park or, I went and looked at it today. Granton Park is, is POA. Is it, it's is primarily, it it's like, it, well, I mean, it, it, it's the boat ramp, and uh, there's some kayak cracks there, right. some bank fishing opportunity, but there's no, no playground, no. Well, there's picnic tables. Yeah. And I guess I was just wondering if anybody takes a look at that. I, I mean, it was in, in perfectly good shape, but it just seemed to me like, again, another opportunity, because there were a lot, a lot more people using it. Of course, it's closer in. Uh, with boating to, that I noticed. That, 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 gets, that gets the most usage for trailer uh, lake access, you know, but, boating and that kind of thing. Yeah, but again, it's one of those small parks that have um, things that people that aren't going out on the lake might like to visit. So I just wonder if we could mention it somewhere. And I'd even be glad to take a look at it along with Tyree Park simply because I think it is something that um, could be maybe better utilized if more people, since the stuff is already there. So I thought that was fantastic. Um, <clears throat> Lake Avalon uh, Beach, the place was pretty much immaculate. Immaculate. There was some 
minor litter debris in the restrooms were clean. Uh, I can't say enough about how well that place is maintained. It's, uh, it's really in excellent shape. Now, having said that, I did notice that the large grill that's close to the shelter, um, the original bottom of the grill uh, where the coals would be is rusted through. And then the plate on top of that that they put, I guess because because it rusted, rusted out. Rusted through yeah. too. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, we we were replacing, replacing those as they come, come up, and okay. we'll it just make came up. up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, everything. Uh, there was just one. Um, I think one um, grill in one of the other two areas that just needed to be cleaned out a little bit, but everything was in great shape. I'd have to say the grounds, the restrooms, the um, all the area around the parking facilities. So I, I look forward to, I'm not sure when is the Avalon going to be open, Beach? Um, it'll open the Saturday of Memorial Weekend, so that's the 29th. Of the okay, I'm sure I read that somewhere, but you know, things don't stick like they used to. Okay. Um, well, it's it's being used, and the trail that uh, has the trailhead there is also being used. I noticed a lot of cars were parked at that end, and people walking their dogs out along the trail, and so um, I was just really pleased to see all of it being um, attended to. Nice, nice reports, reports there, there for your first, first look at those new amenities. Thank, Thank you. Joan, can, a question. Are we going to have reservations for uh, the beach? No. Uh, this year, with the um, COVID kind of dialing down a bit, uh, we, we didn't do reservations last year. We just sort of managed yeah. for capacity. That's the same for the pool this year. Um, the, the time slots, slots that, that we did last year for COVID, COVID that's, that's going, going away. away. Um, so, so, so far, the health department has not put any uh, restrictions on our numbers. So, we okay, hope it to good. be fairly business as normal. Good. That's, that's good, good news, too. too. Okay, okay, Jackie, Jackie is, is not able, able to make the meeting today, today but she, she sent me her amenity reports. reports. She does uh, Lake Ann and RV storage. And for those, she's reporting that they're both in good shape. She talked to some folks there. At Lake Ann, the mountain bikers are very happy, and they're very happy that that section of trail is nice and usable when it's very wet outside, because as you know, we've had a lot of rain lately. Uh, also, the, the kayakers, oh, they, they don't mind the rain at all. They, they like the lake too. She talked to some of those folks who really like the easy access there and the beauty of the bluffs. So that's at Lake Ann. Over at her Medfield Complex report, she says it's very busy. Uh, the restrooms are in good condition. The playground equipment, basketball, pickleball courts, pavilion, and the bike, bicycle track, um, they're all in really good shape. And uh, she said some folks are still talking about uh, the uh, removal of the putt-putt course. Um, and uh, they're looking forward to the, the Branchwood Pickleball Courts, which is now opened actually, so folks should be happy about that. Uh, and that's it for her sections, her amenities. So Scott, we can go over to yours now for a report on Rorden Hall. All right, thanks Chris. So Reardon Hall, um, still in good condition. Uh, the day I was in there, Kathy was very, very busy. She was talking about um, how Reardon Hall will open up on June 1st, so she was very busy creating schedules for all the clubs and groups to start heading back to their meetings. Um, the Kingsdale Pool, uh, the day I was there, they were installing the fence posts and the fencing. Uh, they were also trying to work on the pool resurfacing, but they mentioned that the rain is impacting their progress, so uh, hard to get things done there when it needs to be dry and, and getting ready to fill the pool back up. Kingsdale Pavilion um, is in good, good condition. Uh, the playground there is also in good condition. 
Uh, the mini golf course that everybody's mentioning is really looking great. Uh, that's going to be an awesome amenity. Most of the features are installed. There's still a few left. Um, I happened to be able to talk to the crew when they were there. They were finishing up some of the carpeting install. They said there's still a few more things that, that are on order that need to come in, but as soon as they get there, they'll get those installed. So looking forward to seeing those. Um, Kathy also mentioned while I was talking to her that they're trying to come up with a plan for how they can make the putters and ball, balls available to the members without needing to go into Reardon Hall. So they're trying to look at some ideas and suggestions on that. Um, there's quite a surplus of putters and balls because they've closed, you know, obviously the, the Met Field one. So all of those putters and balls came over to Reardon. So they're trying to figure out how they can get that out there so the members can just go play. Um, the tennis facility, on the day I visited the tennis facility, they were busy with their UTSA at the tournament. Uh, the tennis courts are in good condition. Um, again, Jake mentioned that we're still trying to get courts three and four in the pickleball court resurfaced, but again, the rain is causing an issue there. We need to have, at least in the forecast, a few days of clear skies so they can get the new surface put down without the water really bothering it. Um, he did comment that the signups for the junior tennis camp are filling up fast and expects that all three sessions are gonna be full. He mentioned that he was maybe even considering adding another session if there's enough interest and he has the coaches for it. I uh, also mentioned that the Cancer Challenge and the Memorial Day Mixer Tournaments are also seeing a high turn up, uh, sign up rate. So he was really pleased with that. Um, on my areas for review, uh, the tennis facility again had some areas for review there. There's lights out that on courts three and four and five and six, and that was the day that I visited. They may have been repaired by now. Um, but Jake was asking, he said he had put in a work order and at the time you put in the work order, there were only two lights out, but now there are four lights out. Uh, the maintenance crew had said that they, that wasn't enough lights for them to come out and fix. So he was curious what that minimum number is. So, you know, he can put in the work order when he gets the, the right amount of lights out. But I did talk to one of the USTA teams that was out there and they mentioned that it is pretty dark on those courts. Um, especially for a USTA tournament, there's a lot of people that play at night because they work during the day. And they were complaining about the lights continuing to, to let Jake know about that. Um, there's also some benches that are outside courts five and six and seven and eight that the people sit on to wait, you know, their turn to get into the courts. And they said that they're broken. So if you sit like on the edge, the board will pop up on the other side. So they wanted to know if those could get fixed. And the only other area for review that I have is just that piece of corrugated pipe that I've mentioned before that's at the playground. Um, it's, it's about, about a three-foot three piece sticking up out of the ground. I'm just afraid somebody's going to run and trip over it, especially as we start getting a little warmer. You know, kids are out there. There's, there's been quite a few kids at the playground, so it'd be nice if we could get that kind of out of the way. Scott, can you elaborate on that pipe? I'm sorry, neither Jessica or I remember exactly what you're speaking Sure. Um, as, as you're coming, coming across, across the bridge and heading towards the, the playground, uh -huh. there's a tree, and then right below that tree, and I have the, I've the i got the picture in my report, I didn't bring it with me, but there's a, looks like a drainage pipe that just has popped up out of the ground, it's just sticking up there. Was it PVC or rubber? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's that black drainage pipe that young people use. I'm sure it's there to drain water away from the playground and away from the uh, picnic area, but... The very the end, end of it, it just looks, looks like it's popped, popped up right there. It's just sticking up out of the gravel. Thank, Thank you. Sure. Um, the, the other thing, thing that they, they asked, asked about, about um, at, at least, least the, the women's, women's team was talking, talking about, is they, they were wondering if the maintenance, maintenance crew was still cleaning the tennis courts in the morning. They, they mentioned that, you know, with the wind and everything that's blowing around and a lot of the leaves and the nuts that are still falling from the springtime, um, the, the members, members are having, having to appear about 20 to 30 minutes before their, their times to play on the courts to clean them off because there's a lot of things out there. Um, you know, a lot of people out there can sprain an ankle stepping on one of the nuts or things like that. So they're spending their time to clean it. I know that we, in the fall, we had the maintenance crews out there, but I didn't know if they were still continuing to do that. So I didn't have an answer for them. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you for that report. I'm also looking at the time here, and, and we still have a, a business item on, on Roden Hall. So um, I'm wondering if it would be a good time here now to um, hear the ladies talk about their, their matter with that 
uh, amenity before we move on to the rest of our amenity reports. Would, would the committee uh, enter, entertain that? Would, would you ladies be ready to uh, present and, and talk about your matter? As I said, I'm Ellen Creekbaum, and I've lived here about 10 years. And I'm here, and we're both here because we use Reardon Hall. And um, other facilities have been updated and remodeled, and so I'm wondering what the plan is for Reardon. Now, I'm aware that the community voted no. I voted yes <laughs> but <laughs> on a new facility. But at some point, something's going to have to be done there. So my history with Reardon is I've been attending tap dance class with my teacher. Uh, since, since 2012, 2012. And, and I was, I was involved in the senior health fair, fair there when we set, set that up with the Schmeeding Center, Center, so I know what it's like to set up a, a, an, an event. event. And, and I also, also used the gym, gym and I've kind of watched, watched it slowly decline. decline. Um, the other, I've, I've also, also been, been given vaccines, vaccines with Cornerstone, and we've used Reardon Hall recently, and we're in that side room. And I was waiting for my next customer and looked at that floor and it, it just, just looks worn, it, it looks, looks used, uh, questioning cleanliness, um, and tired, and such. The floor in the big room is also in bad shape, and before COVID, that room, and I'm sure after COVID, that room was used for events, concerts, POA community meetings, golf, dinners, dances, weddings, parties, bazaars, staff meetings, card games, and health fairs. And then I read in the newspaper that the city council has approved $59,000 uh, contract for business fairs and events to promote Bella Vista. So why is that room not ready to host those? Or should that room not be ready to host those events? Because that's a money maker, as I would, I think, because it's rented to people so that they can use it and they pay, they pay. So that would help with the renovation of Reardon Hall maybe, I don't know, but that's my idea. So could we start with that big room to do something with Reardon? And um, so again, I know that it was voted down, but that doesn't mean that we should just let it decline. And that's what I feel like, it's just declining. Well, I have been here since 03. I've been teaching tap dancing and jazz classes at Reardon since 05. And um, the roof doesn't leak anymore. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, so it's, um, you know, the things have been done to, to help with those. It's getting to be old, but it's, it's not as old as this building. And, and what they've done here is just wonderful. It's made wonderful progress and everywhere. Um, we went and looked at some of the things that we hadn't seen yet and wondering why, why are we not doing the same for Reardon Hall? We had several realtors come through the other day when I was having class and they stopped and visited with us. You know, there's a realtor showing people around and the, one of the first places she says they come to Reardon Hall. Why? Because there's so many classes there and there's so many things to do. And it could be renovated because it's a treasure like this building. It's like uh, the Branchwood and all the wonderful things they have done there. And, um, and I know the people that work at Reardon would have great ideas. They would love to be involved in that too. But the most difficult thing for me as an instructor is the floor. It's the edges of it are tripping up. Uh, the, the floor has been there a long time, but it, it just needs maintenance. It just needs care. It, it really does. Uh, and so that's really why we've come today to find out why not all these other buildings are being taken care of. Why aren't we starting with a plan to do Reardon Hall because it looks in the same um, features as the, as the other buildings, such as this one, and out at, at uh, the Highlands and Metfield, and it was all designed in the same way to give the same architecture characteristics as, as the people that designed Bella Vista. So 
I'm just, I, we would really like some feedback as to why this isn't happening. The people that work at Reardon Hall, which some of you I know, the ones that go there, are fantastic. They, they just really work hard, but they are stretched so thin. You talked about cleaning the tennis courts, but they, if any of you walked into Reardon Hall with a mop and a bucket, to clean that huge floor, I mean, it just would be overwhelming. And our schools all around us have all updated their equipment for taking care of cleaning the halls and the floors that need clean. Not Reardon Hall, not at all. I was out at Glen Duffy Elementary at Thanksgiving, uh, volunteering there, and they have better equipment than and that's an old little school, K through three. So I'm, I'm wondering about that too, and I would sure love to hear some feedback. If we can help in any way. Um, I've done six shows at Reardon, uh, all musicals, of course, and um, we've used the stage. A lot of the lights, I know, aren't working anymore. But the people that work at Reardon helped us set those lights, the ones that did work. We were able to make them all come together. Our last show was in 2018, just before the pandemic, you know, hit. And there's not a lot of room, but the the uh, curtains are beautiful. There's not a lot of backstage room, but we made it work. We really made it work, and we loved it. I've been teaching there since '05, and I just I really like to hear that there's some plans. For this wonderful building. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, you for the feedback. feedback. I, I can see, see you're passionate, passionate and everything. <laughs> and uh, do we have any comments at this time, Tom? Yeah, so uh, you're completely correct. Uh, Reardon Hall needs a lot of love. <laughs> uh, and uh, we have been successful in improving a lot of our other buildings. And then the fire hit, the Trafalgar fire, and that really decimated our savings yes. account. So yes. that had a, uh, a large impact. Um, and if you recall, when we were talking about, uh, I'm leaning back because I think we're getting some feedback. Um, if you recall, when we were talking about Branchwood a couple years ago, we, we kind of said the same things. When it gets that old, it just looks dirty. And you clean, you clean, clean, and it looks dirty. So the staff is cleaning it, but when it's that old and it's run down, it just always looks dirty. If you recall going into Branchwood, um, uh, as for the uh, the uh, um, fifty nine thousand, uh, that's not going to us. That's <laughs> for the. Uh, but it's to the city to have events. So what I was saying was, Reardon should be used for some of those events. Sold. Right, I just want to make sure that people understand that we're not getting, we might get a small portion of that. I actually don't think we charge them for use of the room. Or we do, or we do. But we don't charge them 59000 I'm looking at Judy. No, nope, nothing more new. So I would say this is, is we rec fully recognize, and the board is already talking about the possibility of developing a multi-year plan. Um, and uh, for that large of a project, it's going to take several years to put such a plan together. Um, so I'm not giving you really good answers as in when it's going to happen other than the board is fully aware that that building needs work. But we also need to understand that uh, the fire did have a very significant impact upon our financial position. We're in a lot better shape than we were a couple years ago. Uh, but we're still not completely out of the woods. Some people thought that once the assessment increase was approved that everything was fixed. It's, it's, it takes time. It takes time. So uh, we're aware of that. Um, and, and thank you for bringing it to our attention. And uh, uh, next month I'm going to be uh, presenting to the board the budget calendar for 2022 and going to the committees and asking the committees to start thinking about uh, how we need to expend funds uh, in the coming year. Uh, 
but I look at two things. You know, flooring is one thing, building new building like what we did at uh, Branchwood is a whole other thing. And so those are, that's a large, significant undertaking. Do you think, sir, that there might be um, some things? I know they remodeled the bathrooms, which turned out really nice at Weirden, the, mm -hmm. the front ones, and um, that there might be some uh, plans for just doing some things like, like the floor, that either deciding if it needs to be the parquet floor could be somehow sanded or something to it, uh, maybe the it used to be carpeted around the edges, right. and it, the leaks kind of ruined that. But they've got that fixed, and we made it through a terrible winter. You know, the, it was so cold, and the snow and the ice, and the building didn't leak. It was wonderful. I'd look up at that wall because <laughs> I've seen that happen several times. So I'm just I'm just wondering if it could something couldn't be started uh, that would. Um, not take so long to do, you know. That floor is, it's, it's, it is hard. It's an over 50 year old floor, obviously. But those kinds of things need attention a little more often, you know. Um, so so your, your comments are actually timed well because yeah. in the next few months, the committee is gonna start formulating the recommendations uh, on how we should uh, uh, allocate funds for the coming year. So your, your timing is actually yeah. right on. Uh, I can't make any guarantees. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but uh, your concerns are, they're justified, 100%. So I'm not sitting here denying that you're overreacting or exaggerating in any way. You're not. They're 100% they're justified. It needs the work. but. When you only have so much money and you have a lot of different projects that need to be done, sometimes it's hard to uh, make that determination. And you have a lot of square footage in there. So that's not a cheap undertaking. So, um, you know, the committee's heard your concerns and I'm sure they'll remember uh, in the next couple of months when uh, they start talking about budget recommendations. Thank you. Thank you for the time today. We really do appreciate it and we will we're very interested and would help in any way we can too. Absolutely. So. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Appreciate it. All right. Now that closes the topic matters on Jordan for now. We move on to the next amenity, which is the RV Park at Blowing Springs. So, Bell, what do you have for us? Um, I went through there this morning and I went through there a couple weeks ago and there were still lots of bikers. Uh, that were there tent camping, and it was packed. And there were bikers in the RV park too. To me, it kind of looks like the biking community is taking over Blowing Springs. <laughs> well, there, there's it's definitely, definitely a significant portion of our business there. Yes. Because just about every camp and our RV has a bike on it. Yes. So they do have the bridge done now by when you first go into the RV park. And they were cleaning up um, brush around the trail and getting ready to lay sod down when I went through. Otherwise, the Razorback Trail looks like it's just about finished. Mm -hmm. so, and then um, I, went, I haven't been here the last couple of meetings, but the big blue trailer, Joan, do you know about that? Okay, I'll let, let you talk, talk about that because I don't know anything about it. I've just, just seen things on Facebook about it. So. Yeah, she'll, I'll, when you report. I'll talk about yeah. it. Okay. okay. All right. But the bathrooms are clean. Everything looks really, the, the Razorback uh, Trail, the people have really cleaned it up. They, I mean, they did have a lot of stuff laying around, but the, they've got that all cleaned up. The only thing is still the road, and I'm sure they're going to, probably fix that after they're done with all their construction. Right, exactly. It's got a lot of potholes and stuff in it. But, uh, and then on the trails, the Greenway Trail, down by Metfield and all the way um, to Blowing Springs, the only thing I saw, one day, we live at Mansfield in Manchester, and there was this little car decided to park its car right there at Mansfield in Manchester right where the stop sign in and is and where the trails come together. 
So you couldn't see if there were bikers coming or walkers coming. And I, they may have to start posting some signs, no parking. Because he, he pulled over, parked in the mud, and <laughs> unloaded his bikes on the road. Okay. So I don't know how they're going to control that, but I'm sure people are going to just pull on the sides of the roads instead of parking where they're supposed to park. Yeah, we'll make a note of that, and yeah. uh, we, we know the right folks to talk to. So that's it. All right. So, so understand, understand that this, this might be your last committee meeting because yes. you're going to be doing I elsewhere next, next month? month? Yeah, I'm having surgery the 20th of May, so I'll be in a neck brace for four weeks. Oh. Well, I wanted to say thank you for, for your service on the committee. We really appreciate what you did for us. Thank you. It's been fun. Okay, so we got another amenity shift here, and this is uh, Denise's amenity now, and it's her first time looking at Tanyard Creek, and um, she has some new goals for it as well, so let me give you the floor. I do, thank you. So um, Janet and I swapped. I, I, she gave me a Tyree, and I upped her a Tanyard, and so I'll be doing Tanyard here going forward. So as um, Chris said, this is my first time uh, taking a look at it, and I actually looked at it with different lenses, um, different hats that we all wear. And I went there on a, a Monday morning. I wanted to see it after a weekend at 9.30 in the morning. Um, and I was looking at it as how, how would a new visitor look at what they saw? Someone who had never seen it before. How did it appear? I wanted to look at it with respect to what liability might be out there for the POA if, somebody, if something happened, like at the waterfall, for example. And then I'm an Arkansas master naturalist, so of course I'm looking at it from the nature side of things and, and how does it look to, um, to anybody who's walking the trail, for example. So <clears throat> on that Monday morning at 9.30, there were 10 cars in the lot, so it's well used any time of the day, every day of the week. And I actually met a gentleman named Randy Ham, who's the head of the volunteer patrol. I know you know him well. And uh, he and his group do litter pickup and other tasks uh, there at Tanyard. <clears throat> and so he and I toured parts of the trail, and uh, there were some things that he wanted to show me. And the, the areas for review were the restrooms. Um, the men's toilet is clogged, unfortunately, fairly regularly. And I know that that had been called into you. Um, Rick, and that it's, but it's an ongoing maintenance issue there. Um, toilet paper and paper towels were on the floor in both bathrooms. Uh, the trash was mostly full. I don't know how many times a day it gets emptied on the weekend, but probably needs to be done more often than it is. Um, there was also a small litter on the ground throughout the area around the pavilion. So, I mean, I know there are thousands of people who use it, and it, it looks like thousands of people are using it. Um, overall, I would rate the condition really there as fair. Uh, I'd, I'd have to give it a C. Um, the signage, there are 200 of those informational signs at various points around the, the trail. And a fair number of them, I'd say half if not more, are actually defaced or faded to the point where they're not readable. So it's not really used as a nature trail anymore. Uh, and then you brought this up to, to me before uh, when you were talking about switching this out. The plants that these signs refer to, plants die. <laughs> Half of the plants there are not, they're not there. The sign doesn't refer to anything anymore. And, you know, forests grow, things change. Um, that stuff isn't there anymore. And so it just didn't look good to have a sign that's talking about a particular plant and that plant isn't there. And so it would be better to not have those signs than to have them be wrong, I guess. Um, and some of the posts are certainly peeling paint. It just, it just kind of had this aged look to it. Um, same thing can be said about the bridges. The bridges are on the, the upper part, which is the wooden structure. They're all only partially painted. The, the paint is worn. It is showing a lot of wear and tear on the wood, a lot of mildew in spots. Um, it just has a worn look to it. Um, Randy said they tried painting that tacky,
paint with the uh, non-slip in there, it lasted three months. So it is a constant churn of trying to maintain this with paint on it. Um, same thing with the trails. There were many eroded spots that I saw. There are some spots where there's a very steep drop like into the creek. Um, one of the women that I spoke with at the time when, when I was doing this visit said that she actually fell where um, one of the trails is, runs uh, parallel with the bike trail. She just took a misstep. She's got children. She just took a step. She wasn't paying attention, she says, but there was a steep drop of about eight feet and she kind of went down that hillside. And that was her, her comment to me was that we need either some retaining fencing or just take a look at it to see where there are other falling um, places where people could fall. So, so Denise, is this, uh, we still hitting the top points here, or are we, are we going a little bit deeper? No, well, I'm, I'm, st I'm talking about the trails in general. I didn't mean to get into the weeds here. Um, the numerous social trails are also a danger, especially around that waterfall. I was standing there, and people just literally walking over the fence that the trail builders put in there to go up and over the area to sit on the waterfall, and there was a woman with her little tiny dog in her lap, and, you know, it's a cascade. I mean, she could have been, she could have fallen in. Um, the other, other thing that I looked at with the master naturalist lens is there are a number of invasive species that are really taking over the entire, some of the entire hillsides. And that is, that hasn't been examined or maintained for 30 years. So we have to get a grip on that or you're going to have Nothing, nothing but invasive, invasive species. species. You're going to lose every bird and butterfly and every other little critter that, that lives there. Um, I mentioned the lady that said that she fell. Um, and then what I'd like to do, this really is one of our most loved and most used amenities. I mean, this really is the, the jewel. When people bring someone in from out of town, that's the first place they head is to Tanyard. Um, and so I think I would like to do a more in-depth a report with photos for the committee to show you some of the things that I saw um, in either June or July. I found I'm actually going to be out of town June 14th for the next meeting, but I could zoom in and do my show you my desktop, or we could do it in July as an option. Uh, but there's really some noticeable maintenance needs there, um, especially in light of the continued heavy and increasing use. I mean, it's not ever going to go down. Bella Vista is growing, and more people are going to go there. So, so we, we want to make, make this as um, resilient as we can over the next year, years for future growth. So that's it for my report, really. Yeah, I think let's do that detailed report in July then when you could be present. July, uh, And then, you know, we'll, we'll get to see everything and understand it and put eyes on it and, uh, you know, locate it. And, um, and then we... It could become, you know, a regular, a, a priority list for us. It'll become something for us to, to, to look at. We'll have a benchmark from your report, um, and it will go forward nicely. Thank you. Okay, so Gary, thanks for being patient here. How's the gun ranges doing? The gun ranges are doing great. You know, I went out there last Wednesday, had an opportunity to talk to Gary. Uh, there was one, one, one person out there, this was like 10 in the morning, so, uh, over on the rifle side. Uh, the good news is the picnic area is done. Uh, they put some gravel down on there, so they've got a couple of benches and a barbecue. And uh, from what Gary tells me, Royce is uh, actively using that barbecue. <laughs> so, which is good. So, uh, everybody has an opportunity who, if you're going to be waiting uh, to, get, to get your slot, you know, you can have a picnic there if you want. Um, the place looks great, uh, and it always has. It's been very well kept. And uh, the, uh, the amount of people there is, I think, directly proportional to how much ammo people can buy at Academy or, you know, <laughs> yep. Or, or yep. at Bass Pro Shops. Uh, second one, over at Trap and Skeet, is looking fantastic as well. It's just, um, it's in such great condition. Uh, Carol, thank you very much for having uh, Gary come over to help with the, with the shoots because uh, anywhere from 60 to 100 people are up those shoots. And so, yeah, he, uh, he was very, very happy to, to have that help. Uh, 
the, the, the range, range last Wednesday, Wednesday for some reason had a lot of people out. I haven't, I haven't seen a Wednesday, Wednesday that busy for a long time, time which, which is good news for us. And uh, he had shown me some receipts and things that we've been able to, we've been able to have some good days with uh, and keeping up with how many people want to come out there. But it's a, uh, it seems to be just gaining more traction. And uh, I can always see it continuing in the summertime as well. Other than that, um, like I said, there's no additional observations. I didn't have an opportunity to, I wasn't going to go walk, walking over to people that were in the middle of sh uh, shooting trap and ski uh, because there was a lot of them there. And, and in fact, they were full on one side completely. So uh, that's it for now. All right, cool. Always nice to report on a busy M entity, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Oh, I do have one thing I wanted to say to Janet uh, about Grant and Park. I, I brought that up about three years ago, three or four years ago. I, next year's my last year, okay. So, um, and I wanted to uh, see if we could turn it into a full-fledged amenity. Uh, and, but what I did find out is Granton Park is also like right in a floodplain. So if you're ever, if you're ever coming down Evanton after it was raining like it has, uh, it, it just, just washes completely over over the uh, the road that goes down to the uh, the launch, and uh, that, and it's, it's underwater. underwater. That's, that's why they got the porta potty up on a platform. So, uh, but I've thought about that as well. It would be, I thought it would be a great place to to make it another. Yeah. And, and there is a there is a stream that is supposed, supposed to take most, most of that water, water. Um, but uh, in its, its current state, state it doesn't. doesn't. And it there's. We're, we're, we're going to do, do some work, work to get, get that, that put back, back. Okay. but it's, it's even given, given that it's it's still, still like he says, says it's um, it's, it's subject, subject to a, a disaster. disaster. So well, it, we could uh, there could always be a sign put up, you know, about warning about flash flooding or or whatever road road cover. Yeah, signs, signs are one thing, thing but, but to put, put something in place and have it wash away and destroyed I see. is it's something else. So. Okay. <clears throat> I have also a suggestion at Grattan. That's where we usually put our boat in at. And if people park along that, um, be the right side, mm -hmm. and the boat trailers are on the other side, my husband always goes, it's hard to get the boat backed up in there because it's such tight quarters. He asked if I could make a suggestion to not have people park right there along that right-hand side. On the grassy side. Right. Okay. I'll the side where the bathroom is. Uh, now, are you talking about right up the, close to the lake? Is the problem? Right. right. There's, there's designated parking right. there. It, it, with it's painted it's off in lines. Mm -hmm. are, are you saying, saying that those shouldn't be there? Well, or are they parking park outside of those lines? No, they're parking up there, right close to where you back your trailer in. Okay. So, but if there's boat trailers on the other side, it's real difficult to get the boat backed up okay. in there. I'll, I'll take a look I mean, there. it's not a problem if they park further down by the bathroom there, mm -hmm. but when it's right up next to the lake, it's difficult. And especially for me, because I'm not a very good backer. <laughs> well, the new trucks are supposed to do it automatically. <laughs> All right, the next amenity is mine. It's London Park at the Lake Windsor, and it's looking beautiful and lush and green. Unfortunately, the weather was poor yesterday, and nobody was using it. But it's looking beautiful and waiting for folks to come back when the weather's nice. So that is London Park. And last but not least on our list would be a meet and greet report by yourself, Debbie. Um, this Saturday is our fourth Zoom meet and greet. We've got, oh, probably 36 people signed up so far. Um, which, which is less, less than normal, normal. Um, but, um, but I, I think, think they're, they're kind, kind of waiting because they want to wait for meeting in person. And, and so, so and hopefully in three months we'll be able to have a meet and greet and in person. person. Um, the, the other, other thing, thing was, was June 17th, 17th I was trying to put together a welcome party at Lake Point for all the people who had been on the Zoom meetings, and I've just kind, kind of canned can that at this point, point because, because I'm involved, involved with the APT and the WAPT and there's just too much stuff going on right now. So anyway, the, the next meet and greet hopefully will be later this summer and it'll be in person. So that's it. Awesome, excellent. 
Okay, that's it for the amenities from us committee volunteers. We'll turn it over to the staff now for their reports. And Rick, I'll give you the microphone first. Okay, um, a lot of what I have to report on is kind of uh, carry over between recreation and, and the lakes committee, but uh, so take that with a grain of salt. I'll, I'll report on it here as well. Our Lake Rayburn drawdown, uh, we're currently back to within one foot of full pool, so that we're, we're happy about that. We're, I was hoping to get that back before the start of uh, the you know, swimming season and that kind of thing, and, and we're on schedule for that. Uh, the Lake Ann sinkhole, we continue to keep uh, our drain gate open about 50% to take some of that volume of water off of the spillway. Uh, we are... Uh, have uh, results from, from one engineer on, on what we should do there, but we're also looking to get two more bids for the repair work for that. Um, so that's going to extend things into the summer further than we originally expected. Um, and because we have to make some repairs of, of, of some of the existing cracks that are in the concrete, um, and, and, and when we actually do the filling of the sinkhole, we're going to have to go back and forth a couple times with the lake level to see that, that we have correctly fixed the problem. Um, so the lake level will fluctuate this summer um, about two feet. It'll go from full pool down two feet and back and forth a couple times. So... Uh, I would have folks expect that for the rest of the year. Um, let's see. Our POA Rangers, um, they're no longer called Lake Rangers uh, because we do patrol other areas. Uh, they made 1,252 contacts in March and then 2,144 uh, in April. So almost double going between March and April. Um, in March, we removed 109 individuals that, that couldn't show membership. Um, and this past month, 141. Um, so we're, we're seeing the start of the, of the summer season. Um, and uh, even our boating contacts are starting to increase pretty substantially. So we'll move on to the small dog park. Um, all the major work is complete there. Like I said earlier, we do have that uh, that gate locked right now. We're trying to get that Bermuda grass going um, before we release before we release the hounds. Um, and uh, so uh, the small hounds. Um, and, and we've just you know we we've had some warm spells, but for the most part, it's been a pretty cool spring. And that Bermuda grass really doesn't take off until we get hot weather. And so we want to start off with a good. Uh, park for, for people, people to enjoy, enjoy and, and, and um, you know, we don't, we don't want to jump the gun on that. So, so we're looking at a June, early June opening. Rick, I have a question about the small dog park. The, there's lots of furniture in the log, large dog park, and will you move some of that furniture to the small? We'll either move some or bring some new in. Okay. okay. So th th there will be, there will be, uh, Sitting areas. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Grounds maintenance has been uh, working with the Tanier Creek volunteers to remove some overgrowth and fallen, fallen trees. Um, to speak to your point about the invasives. So um, I agree that they do need to go. Um, however, th there are some things there that are even though they're not native, are providing some stream bank stabilization. That if they were gone, um, you know, I, I would hate to go through and wholesale kill off something and not have a plan for putting something back. I agree. No, I, and, and if it's doing a, a function, a job, that's good. The, it still just needs to be trimmed and maintained so it doesn't start invading other areas. And then the exactly. other thing is that I'm, I'm really talking to the stuff that's killing trees and all the other native um, 
flowers and plants in particular mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. So that's really the stuff that's really out of control. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, you'll you'll see uh, just a note from our um, our grounds maintenance staff, um, Mark Nelson, who's not uh, a direct direct employee of mine, but he wanted to pass the word that there are a lot of um, dead shrubbery and, and things in all of our and all of the amenities shrubbery beds that because of the extreme cold snap we had this winter. Up until now, he was kind of observing to see um, how much was actually dead and how much was just delayed in coming out. And it is becoming more obvious that we have a lot of dead, a lot of dead stuff. And he'll be replacing a lot of that this year, and uh, even probably budgeting for it for next year as well because it's pretty extensive. Our fisheries and uh, uh, lakes ecology. Department, uh, we finished our, our uh, fishery sampling uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that information is already currently available on our website uh, for those that are interested in the status of fishing in, in Bella Vista. Um, we did have flooding of our hatchery ponds on the Berksdale Golf Course. We expect nearly a total loss there. Uh, haven't had a chance to actually sample, but uh, it was as much water flowing through the, the valley as I've ever seen. Um, so, uh, and we're also treating uh, algae on Lake Avalon, and we now have our uh, sampling dates for sampling for E. coli there to be in compliance with uh, the state health department for, um, for keeping that beach safe. So uh, we're aware of that. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Chris um, took a sample today to get that taken care of. So and that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Rick. We'll pass it right to your right then. Right to John. So I'll keep it fairly short and sweet. Uh, over at the gun range, rifle pistol, uh, things are slower than normal. Exactly why you said, or that's the reason we think uh, ammo is a little hard to find right now, especially for uh, most rifle and pistol calibers. It is steady on the weekends, so there, there's some getting through here and there, uh, or people had you know a pretty good stockpile uh, coming in. Uh, the gravel in the picnic area is in. We still need another load to kind of get our path cleaned up uh, and clean up some of those uh, aprons around the uh, shooting areas. <clears throat> and then over at Trap and Skeet, uh, it, it's been killing us this year. It, it has been really busy uh, on the weekends, uh, as you observed on a Wednesday. Uh, probably the main reason for the Wednesday being so busy is we did have an ATA shoot on Sunday uh, that was slightly lower attended, uh, probably because of weather and, and Mother's Day. But, uh, but I would imagine a lot of people were out Wednesday practicing. Uh, we had three large shoots uh, that were 80 plus in April and we've already had two so far this month, but we've got two more already uh, for this month. Uh, so everything that we had previous to COVID as far as shoots has come back and we've actually done at least that I can think of one extra this year uh, that we otherwise normally wouldn't have done. Uh, so now we're preparing for June, uh, which is always an incredibly busy month for us. And it's got our, our larger events uh, really housed in there. Uh, the cancer challenge is coming up. Uh, we know we're gonna have a night shoot in that this year. Uh, that will be a youth event where we'll shoot till, they say till midnight, but Realistically, it's probably going to be later than midnight. Uh, that's the way it was in 2019, the last time we did this. So, so we we'll be getting prepped up for that. Uh, sure, it'll be a good time. Uh, and then, other than that, classes are full uh, and steady. Uh, they're slowing down just a little bit, uh, and I say that only because I'm not having to add more classes to keep up with demand now. So, that's what I got. Okay, good deal. John, I have one question there. Last month I had contacted you about some lighting at Lock Loman. Has that? Re refresh my memory. Okay, there was, someone was saying the ball diamond lighting. Yeah. 
Or was that Rick? That, that was me. Okay. Um, I, I did uh, put in a work order. Okay. Um, it, as of this morning, has not been taken care of. Okay. And I asked again about that. So um, uh, I reiterated that uh, folks would like to start using that at night and that um, we, need to, we need to see about getting that fixed. Okay. Thank you. So, yes. Thank you. Okay, and then with that, we'll go over to the Director of Recreation and Wellness, Joan. Yeah, so thanks for um, sort of introducing me, Chris. I just wanted to say hi to, Macy knows me already, but to Debbie and Mary. Um, in case you don't know, uh, Rick and John um, are in charge of lakes and um, some parks, and I'm the Director of Recreation, and I'm in charge of Recreation Wellness and all the big park complexes like Kingsdale, Reardon, Metfield, Branchwood. I'm happy to have a couple of my team members here. This is Jessica. Jessica is our Branchwood and Aquatics Manager. And Trey here, he is um, our Marina Supervisor and he oversees the trails. So that's part of the recreation team. Um, and you probably know enough about this committee since you've been watching but there's you, all of you volunteers that play an important role and it's a great way for us to hear from you. And then also um, sometimes there's rumors that you guys hear about or some things that might not be clear and hopefully we can feed back to you guys what may or may not be true. Um, so one thing I wanted to start with, Scott, real quick before I forget, because um, you did talk to Kathy about how we might be administrating the new mini golf um, equipment, we've always given it out at Reardon, but as soon as the pools open, we also give it out at the pools. And that actually is probably where we give out the most during the summer. Um, so we wanna get it open, um, but my goal is to have a station out there so in off hours, people can just take equipment. We do get a lot of vandalism in, in Bella Vista. So my next segue is, one of the other things that this committee does really well is kind of keeps their eyes and ears to the ground. And if you see something, say something, <laughs> um, because it takes members to members to help control. We are such a vast, big uh, POA. I mean, you mentioned Granton, which, you know, is used, but it's not used as much as, a, but if you think about how spread out we are, even though uh, Rick has our park rangers uh, that, look for things we can't always catch everything so um, once we get it underway a little bit we hope to have a station that can be checked out as you go for those off hours we won't leave a ton of equipment out there but that's our plan um, one of the other things i'm just going to pass around um, speaking of mini golf we're super excited actually scott we're 99 percent done the only thing that's needed on the new mini golf course at Reardon and it's oh, called cool, the Oz yeah. zone by the way is to put up our sign and our sign looks a lot like these stickers that are going around I had these stickers created because after the kids play they can get this sticker that says they played at the Oz zone um, but all our features are in our carpet is done um, we're just waiting for our our sign to be installed and um, Sometimes when staff speaks, or at least when I speak, it, it, sometimes I feel like I'm giving excuses, and I don't mean to be that way. But in the spring, we are all running and gunning, including, you know, Rick mentioned some lights. Um, Scott mentioned some lights, tennis. It's not an excuse, and it's not necessarily okay, but it is our reality. We are also short-staffed because of COVID from time to time. And so there's only so many maintenance people to go around. And so some things get prioritized, such as right now, my number one prior to, prior to, prioritization is for the pools. And that's Jessica's too. And in fact, I just told um, my team the other day, I have brand new picnic tables just delivered to Blowing Springs Park and some grills. And they will be sitting there on a pallet for several weeks until my team has the time to do all the things that they need to do to get two pool complexes up and running. So, you know, again, I'm very transparent and that's my goal for this committee is the more you know, 
the better it helps you understand. It's not perfect always, and I apologize for that. And again, it doesn't mean that I don't take your feedback and won't try and action it as, as fast as possible. Um, pickleball, already mentioned. Again, lots of great compliments. One of the things Jessica just shared with me is already there's a bunch of trash on the courts, even though we have trash cans out there. So that's something I know at least three people in this room probably play or at least go by there. You know, if you see that, just ask your fellow member to say, hey, you know, don't forget to take your water bottle when you go because it just helps us all look good. Um, the marina, compliments to Trey. We've only been open a month and a half. We've had both months better than budget um, from boat rentals. So we expect another high demand year. Um, last year was COVID as it, is, it did with most outdoor activities. It upped the number of people renting our boats. We expect the same this year. Um, I also want to mention that Trey has done a great job. He has uh, secured a new old uh, ski and fish boat. Uh, with COVID, you know, getting your hands on a, a decent boat was hard to find. He not only found us a boat that was decent, he had to rebuild a, a good part of it. And so we're lucky to have um, his expertise in house. Um, regarding Blowing Springs, um, you mentioned the connector trail. It will be um, officially open later in the end of the month, but it's open for all intents and purposes now, meaning it's, its main use is Functional. doable now. I shouldn't say the end of this month. I should say next month, you're going to see a lot more things like sod and grass seed along the side and the finishing touches on bridges and some rework on bridges. We found uh, Trey and I were out there the other day with the city and all the builders, and we found um, a cedar post in the park that a couple of kids climbing on and it's going to crack. So they'll have to rework that. And that's the process with the trails always. Um, so, so stay tuned for that. But it's very exciting to see how many people are using that. Mm -hmm. And while I'm speaking about the trails, in case you hear or see anything on Facebook, there is going to be a rerouting because of the 340 bridge um, down here by Lanc Lancashire and the Country Club. That's where one of the soft surface trails goes through. When that bridge is done by Arkansas Department of Transportation later this year or started later this year, there's going to have to be a reroute. Well, some of that reroute work is already happening or at least being planned. Some of that goes up by uh, the Methodist Church. And sometimes people see flags and think, oh, is that a new trail going in? Remember, nine times out of 10, it's not a new trail. It's a reroute. They're, they're taking it um, to a place where they can get um, trails connected, but it's not considered new. Um, the nature of trails is it's ongoing work. But just to let you know, in case you hear anything about that. Um, the beach. Yeah. Thank you for that, Trey. And I'll just r real quick repeat, repeat for those that might be on Zoom. Trey was mentioning that that bridge is no quick project. It could take up to two years. And so that's why we wouldn't just take that trail out of commission. And it's a major connector. So that's um, why that's being rerouted. Um, Blowing Springs uh, continues to be very busy. You're right. You're going to see a lot of bikes in the park. That's been the case for uh, quite a long time, but also just know that campers, a lot of campers <laughs> carry bikes, even if they use them or not. And so that's sort of the nature of, of that as well. But um, two other things regarding the park. So one of the big container that Val mentioned. So in the back of the park, we'll know more tonight. That's what the community meeting is, but a what's called a gear garden, as in bike gear, a uh, beer garden is being planned for the back of the park, which would be seasonal. It would be open, uh, again, still TBD, 
but Tommy Lee in our food and beverage group has been working on that. That is not what that final unit's gonna look like. It's gonna have a naturescape design on it and um, even some maps of the park and whatnot, and it will blend in with the scenery very well. But it's a shipping container at, at, at its core right now, and so it is a little less attractive, but that's what's planned. And it'd be that picnic area, and it'll just be serving drinks, um, including non-alcoholic uh, beverages. Um, and so more to come on that. Uh, like I said, it's going up before the planning committee uh, public meeting tonight. Um, and then lastly, there was some concern about us expanding camping in the park, mainly tent camping. At the back of the park, there are four pedestals to the back of the restroom. I had those installed several years ago and primarily for food trucks for our events out there. And we have used those a number of times and they work really well. But from the get go, that's also a flat area. I have used that for overflow camping. Times like um, craft fairs and when the park sold out. Recently we've been sold out and we've allowed a couple of tent campers back there. Uh, it's not something we do every day of the week and it's not a full-fledged camping site, but it, it does allow us to uh, utilize the back of the park. And we already have tent camping back there, but people thought that we just added a bunch of spots and we did not. Those spots existed and they were always designed to be somewhat generic so you, you could use them for different things. So just uh, wanted to update you on that. Um, I think that's it for me. Uh, appreciate you guys for all you do. Okay. Thank you very much. And the last word comes from the marketing person, Judy. I'll just make it really quick. We're all good. Look for the summer magazine in June and thanks for coming out. Well, that's a great magazine. I do look forward to that. Okay, so uh, last note of administration for our committee here. Don't forget to vote. We have to vote on our new committee members. So that handy little form that I sent you by email, go ahead and fill that out while the candidates are fresh in your mind and shoot that off to me tomorrow or midweek at the best, at the latest. And um, I'll be able to tally that up at the right time then. Is there any other issues, remarks, or comments before we close out this meeting? All right, good, good session. So as I get back to practicing my parliamentary procedures, do I have a motion to close the meeting? All right, a second. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, folks.